thanks for having me here today to talk about misinformation, disinformation, the infodemic, and then the impact that it's had on, on the United States health just over this last year. So I'm a family medicine physician, uh, graduated from medical school back in 1997, uh, went through a three-year residency program at University of California, Irvine, graduated in 2000, and then practiced. I was in the reserves at the time, so I practiced, had my own practice in Southern California uh, for about nine years. At the uh, end of nine years, I had deployed a couple of times with the Army Reserves and decided I really enjoyed my time with the Army those times that I was downrange in Iraq, and decided it was uh, time for me to do something new. Uh, sold my practice, uh, initially went on a mobilization with uh, civil affairs for a period of about a year and a half. Uh, found that I really did enjoy it very much serving in the military, taking care of our soldiers, mm -hmm. and then uh, decided to make the jump into active component. So in 2011, I uh, went full-time active component. Uh, first with the 82nd Airborne, did that for two years, deployed to Afghanistan then went to CGSC, and then went to Korea for almost four years before then coming back to the United States and taking a battalion command, or uh, what we call a combat support hospital, which is equivalent to a battalion command at uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana. And then following that, uh, came here. Misinformation and disinformation are two sides of the same coin. Mm. Let's start with disinformation. Disinformation is knowingly spreading false information. The intent is there, right? Mm. It's basically lying. On the other side of the coin is misinformation. Somebody doesn't have the intent to lie, uh, but they're spreading bad information unknowingly. That's the difference between misinformation and disinformation. But that's not, that's not all, let's not stop there. There's two more things I'd like to talk about, and that's uh, conflicting information, right? Where you have information coming from two reputable sources that uh, conflict with each other. But then you can also have just too much information. So uh, what we've seen uh, throughout the pandemic is a combination of misinformation, disinformation, conflicting information, and just too much information. Altogether, this just leads to a burnout. People just have, uh, they don't know what to believe. Uh, they get burned out by it. They, they uh, don't know what to do. So uh, the World Health Organization has termed this an infodemic, where you have all of that coming together. Basically, as soon as the pandemic started, we started seeing disinformation out there. We started seeing uh, disinformation coming from China, trying to say the uh, virus wasn't coming from China. We saw political groups saying, if you wear a mask, then you're not part of us. And we saw other groups saying, the, the, the COVID vaccine, or I'm sorry, the, the COVID virus is not that dangerous. Well, as the COVID vaccine now has come out, uh, the dialogue is starting to shift. And now we're seeing uh, Russia in particular, as well as domestic violent extremists, uh, trying to spread the narrative that the vaccine is dangerous or it's not effective, uh, that somehow it maybe changes your DNA. None of that's true, but that's currently the information that's out there. So there's three major groups that are trying to spread disinformation. You have foreign adversaries, you have domestic extremists, and then you also have snake oil salesmen, right? So for the, uh, for the foreign adversaries, uh, their intent is basically just to undermine Western democracy, to uh, sow discord among our population. For domestic violent extremists, uh, their intent is to incite their base and to create anti-government sentiment. Now for the snake oil salesmen, basically they're gonna do whatever it takes in order to sell their product. And if that means lying about it, they're gonna do that. Let me take you through a story, but before I do that, I'd like to talk to you about four things that are gonna be key to this story. Mm -hmm. uh, first, you have to have trust. Second, you have to have emotion. Uh, third, you need to have confirmation bias. And then fourth, you need to have social media or search engine algorithms that are amplifying all of this. So it'll make sense as I tell you this story. So imagine, if you will, we have a young, uh, mother, single mother, her name's Mary. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of time to be paying attention to the news, uh, but she does occasionally go onto Facebook and just keep up with her friends, see what her friends are doing. Well, one day, uh, one of her friends who she trusts uh, posts a link to a story, a shocking story, a very emotional story about a young woman who received the COVID vaccine and then died shortly thereafter. Now, the story is not true, but she's concerned about it. 
right? She's a young working mom. This is a concerning story. It, it stirs up emotion. So she clicks the link that then takes her to what looks like a, a legitimate news site. Well, if she spent a little bit of time and looked at the site, she'd see there's other things on there that don't make a lot of sense. But she looks at the one story. And the story seems legitimate. It looks like it's on a legitimate website. And then that has then some links to other, other sites, including a YouTube video. She clicks on the link to the YouTube video. And that YouTube video, video then gives her that confirmation bias. It continues to sell her the story that vaccines are bad. And then unfortunately, because of the YouTube algorithms, she starts getting more videos that have the same story, the same narrative. So very quickly, within just a matter of a few minutes, uh, Mary's gone from somebody who maybe just had some questions about vaccines to now somebody who's very much against the COVID vaccine. Right now, one third of Americans are saying, including in the military, are saying that they don't want the vaccine. Now, some of the more recent polls are saying that uh, maybe that number is decreasing, which is good. Uh, but we are still seeing an alarming number of young people and people in certain groups that are still very much against uh, getting vaccinated. And the risk to the population then is you have pockets where people haven't been vaccinated. The virus continues to spread, it continues to mutate, and that's a risk for all of us, even if we've been vaccinated. So how do we, how do we combat that, right? Uh, well, if you have a young soldier or you have a family member who says, I'm not gonna get vaccinated, the worst thing you could do is tell them that's a terrible idea. Uh, you don't, you don't want to question them. You don't want to challenge their, their thoughts. Uh, what you want to do is just listen to them. Ask a key question, why? Why don't you want to get the shot? And let them explain it to you. And then ask more open-ended questions. Don't pass any judgment. And as you do that, what that does is it takes it from being an emotional a feeling about the vaccine and allows them to start thinking about it at higher cognitive levels. And you just want to work with them and just spend the time. Now, it takes a lot of time to do that, right? It doesn't take hardly any time to get somebody hooked on disinformation, but it takes a very long time to bring them back out of that. 2016 was kind of a turning point for the United States. Uh, prior to 2016, with the Russian meddling in the election, uh, people didn't really have, at least society as a whole, didn't really have an understanding of how serious the algorithms are that uh, provide content to you on Facebook, YouTube, search engines, uh, Instagram. Those algorithms uh, just naturally drive uh, confirmation bias. So if you do a search for concerns about vaccine, COVID vaccine, you're gonna get more and more information about things that are concerning about uh, the vaccine. Or if you're specifically search, uh, is it dangerous? You're gonna get more sites that show you things that maybe it's potentially dangerous, right? Uh, if you go to uh, YouTube, you'll start seeing more videos about uh, the vaccine and how it's potentially a negative thing. Uh, so these are all being driven by algorithms. Uh, it's not a person behind it. Uh, it's just something that is intended to get you to stay on the website, to click through to the next thing, and hopefully look at some of the advertising. Fortunately, uh, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, the other uh, social media and search engine companies, uh, they are very acutely aware of what's going on. Uh, Facebook uses artificial intelligence and about 90% of all the moderation that happens on Facebook is done through artificial intelligence. And as they're seeing more and more of this disinformation and misinformation, uh, they're getting more and more sophisticated on how to combat it, how to remove it, how to put up other uh, notices that this might be disinformation or misinformation and hopefully allow people to link through to the right information. So good disinformation, if there is such a thing, well-crafted disinformation, uh, usually starts with something that has just a little bit of some truth to it, right? It allows for easier buy-in, allows for more of that trust that I was talking about. Um, so unfortunately, there is some history of you know conspiracies that have happened over the years. Uh, the Tuskegee experiment is one horrific example. Uh, you also have example of the tobacco companies for decades very clearly knew what the risks were of smoking, but then had a very deliberate campaign of preventing people from getting the truth. Well, it eventually did come out. So Americans 
and, and people in general are primed for disinformation. It's easy for them to believe because there have been uh, conspiracies in the past and there have been uh, events where people have been harmed through uh, medical experiments. Uh, a very good example of uh, disinformation that happened back in the 80s uh, was a Russian disinformation campaign uh, that was geared towards uh, uh, disrupting the United States, uh, same idea of undermining uh, Western uh, democracy, sowing discord. But the message that they put out was that HIV and AIDS were developed by the CIA uh, against African-American people. And unfortunately, that had very long legs and that, that uh, was republished hundreds and hundreds of times around the world without people understanding. And this is in the days before social media. Without people understanding that this was completely made up, it was Russian propaganda from the KGB, disinformation from the KGB, uh, that was deliberately set up in order to harm the United States. Now, in the early 90s, uh, after the fall of, of the Soviet Union, uh, the United States uh, ambassador met with the Russian ambassador and said, could you please stop spreading this information? And they agreed. And they did stop. In fact, they reversed it and they published that. But it didn't make very much of a dent. That disinformation was already out there. It was already absorbed into people's consciousness. And to this day, uh, it still echoes. And it's part of the reason that we do see some of the resistance to vaccination, the COVID vaccination. You've got to go to reputable websites and, and reputable news organizations. Uh, generally, uh, if you're going to Washington Post, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, well-known publications, those are vetted. They do in-depth in research. Uh, they've got editors to make sure that the information that's being presented is truthful and correct, as correct as it can be. You've also got uh, organizations uh, like the CDC, their Centers, Centers for uh, Disease Control, uh, that publish uh, excellent uh, information on COVID, the COVID vaccine, current statistics. Uh, these are sites that you should be using uh, to get your information from. Early in the pandemic, uh, the CDC had asked to go into China to get more information about what is going on with this virus. They had very little information and China was purposely blocking anybody from coming in. So uh, it put the United States, put the CDC uh, definitely in a bad position because they just didn't know what this virus is capable of. Uh, initially, they thought, well, you didn't need a virus, you didn't need a, a mask. Uh, but later they realized, yes, you do need a mask. So on one hand, you had uh, CDC come out and say with Anthony Fauci saying, you don't need to wear a mask. And then a short time later said, yes, you do need to wear a mask. Every medical procedure, whether it's a vaccine or something else, has some element of risk to it. We know that. And the COVID vaccine so far, overall, when compared against other vaccines, now remember, Millions and millions of people have already received the vaccine here in the United States and around the world. And we have seen some people have a reaction to it and a few people have died from it. Uh, but as, there, as we have these individuals who are having this happen, we're learning about who should not have the vaccine, who's at higher risk uh, for having side effects. But I just wanna make it very clear, it's a very, very small number compared to the millions and millions of people who've had the vaccine have had no issues at all. So we expect there to be some people who do have a side effect, uh, but we are seeing that number to be very, very low and to be in line with any other kind of vaccine. From an individual level, uh, there's a few things that you can do. Uh, first off, I think we're all seeing there's a lot less information coming out than there was, say, this time last year. It's not as overwhelming. There's not all this uh, stuff coming out right off of preprint servers and things that we normally wouldn't see in the news. Uh, it's the, new, the news has dialed down a lot, so that's helpful. Uh, the information that's coming out uh, from the government is very consistent now. I think you're seeing the message very consistently, and it's coming from one source, and that's the CDC, which is where it should be coming from. These are the experts. These are the people who we want to be protecting us from viruses, bacteria, and other diseases. Uh, so. Fortunately, things are already getting better, but from an individual standpoint, what you can do is if you come across something that looks like disinformation or misinformation, there's, there's about four things uh, that you should be looking for, right? That should clue you in that this is disinformation or misinformation. One, it's an emotional story, right? Uh, two, that is being uh, 
given to you from a site that you've never maybe heard of. It's not a reputable site. It's not a site that's part of the mainstream media. Uh, three, it may have a narrative, which is very common among conspiracy theories, of the mainstream doesn't know what they're talking about, but this small inner group over here, uh, they really know the truth. That is a hallmark of a conspiracy theory. And then the fourth thing uh, to look for is, is this um, being promoted by a very charismatic individual? In those cases, it's often somebody who's trying to sell you something, right? I'm not gonna give you any specific examples there, but you maybe can think about who uh, some individuals that, that, that might make sense. Uh, and then there's two things you can do to help stop the spread of disinformation. Uh, the first is if you see something that meets those criteria, take a look at a fact-checking website, a reputable fact-checking website, and there's, there's a number, Snopes, uh, PolitiFact, factcheck.org, the Washington Post uh, fact-checking uh, section. Those are all excellent sites, uh, nonpartisan sites, uh, for finding out if the information that you're seeing is true. And then the second thing that you can do is just don't forward that information. Don't post it on your Facebook. Don't put it on your Twitter. Uh, let somebody else, let a reputable news source handle that. We can't control the algorithm. Um, there's a number of steps that uh, Websites can take and are currently taking and changing the algorithms, but we still have a long way to go there. Uh, from an individual perspective, uh, you just have to be aware of what are the signs uh, of disinformation, and you need to take it upon yourself to be a, a smart consumer of information and then fact check that against reputable sources. I just wanna thank you very much for giving me the time to talk about misinformation, disinformation, the infodemic, and how it's impacting both our soldiers as well as the health of the nation.